As we kind of close things out with our discussion of DAX, I also just want to dedicate a few minutes to talk about quick measures. Because especially when you're just sort of learning the ropes of DAX, quick measures can be a really good tool to sort of seeing how Power BI tends to approach some of these common DAX calculation situations and gives you, you know, ready-made code that you can look at to sort of understand how DAX works behind the scenes and hopefully some kind of give you some ideas for how the syntax works and things that you need to keep in mind when performing some of the calculations that we've discussed here. You can obviously do it the Sean way, but if you're if you are thinking at this point that the Sean way is not going to work for you or you need to learn sort of your own approach to DAX, that's totally valid. Everybody has their own flavor of DAX. Uh, that they develop over the course of their Power BI career. So I would recommend that you maybe check out Quick Measures and see how Power BI automatically generates code for some of the uh, situations that we've already discussed here. Now, for this demonstration, just because we're going to be working with Quick Measures and they're going to kind of default to our first table up here, I took the liber liberty of hiding some of the other measure tables that we've created so far, just to kind of streamline things a little bit as I create these Quick Measures. So Quick Measures are uh, an option that you can sort of deploy from the Home tab of your ribbon or the modeling tab of your ribbon over here. It, it typically looks just like the measure icon with the little calculator tool, but there's a lightning bolt so that you know it's fast, I guess. Uh, I guess Power BI, Microsoft, they had to differentiate it somehow, so they went with the, micro, the, the lightning bolt. So anyway, uh, you can also just right click over here on one of your tables or in your measures tables, and you'll see that new quick measure is an option here. And that's kind of how we're going to start here. So they're called quick measures because they don't actually require you to know too much code. They just kind of require you to know basically the outcome that you're going for and which elements from your data model are going to make sense to get to that outcome. If you drop down the different calculation options, you'll see a whole bunch of different you know, items to choose from. You can choose different aggregations by different categorical variables from your data or different you know, uh, fields. You've got uh, some different kinds of filter uh, functions and, and measures that you can pre-calculate. Obviously, there's several time intelligence uh, formulas that are built in that, you know, I kind of told you uh, or led you to believe would be because time intelligence is such a useful, common, um, you know, purpose for utilizing DAX functions. And then there's also, you know, different ways for sort of calculating totals and different mathematical operations and even some text situations where you need to like concatenate lists of different values together. So we're going to start by just creating first in a category level average. So let's go ahead and calculate an average per category. We're going to utilize our revenue measure that we've already created here. That's going to serve as our base value. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to find a categorical dimension from our data. And I'm just going to use product category. And what it's going to do is it's going to calculate average revenue over the items in that product category. So let's go ahead and test it out. You know, after a second, you'll see the measure appear over here in our options with a, with a name that Power BI automatically generated, revenue average per product category. And you can see that it's using average X, which is one of the X functions that we've talked about. You can see it's using values. It's applying, you know, some slightly different logic to, you know, sort of the, tutor the tor tutorial or demonstration that I gave you, but not too dissimilar. As I said, Power BI's uh, you know, quick measures are not necessarily going to align one-to-one -one with how I approach some of these problems. There are all kinds of different ways to get the same outcome with DAX. Uh, you know, the way that I'm used to doing them works for me. The way that uh, Power BI uh, sort of um, uh, compiles these, these quick measures often works you know, for different situations depending on how your data model is structured. In this situation, hopefully, uh, this quick measure will work just fine for us. I'm going to go ahead and grab product category since that's what I was calculating my average revenue for. I'm going to go ahead and drop revenue in here as a comparison and you can see kind of how everything adds up. I'm going to go ahead and kind of sort it top to bottom. You can see, you know, toys uh, is the top selling category by a pretty wide margin, about 5 million compared to 2.7 for the next one. 
And the average revenue uh, calculation ends up coming out up to about 2.9 million, which I think makes sense given the values that I'm seeing here. Kind of makes sense that the average is higher than four of the different categories because we do have this outlier here with toys. So that appears to be working just fine. Uh, it's probably no surprise that another quick measure that we can calculate is a year-to-date total or a month-to-date total, very similar to the uh, some of the time intelligence uh, measures that we wrote uh, just a, a, a lesson or a, couple, a lesson or two ago. So let's just go for a year-to-date total, and I'm going to use the same revenue uh, measure there as my base calculation measure. And now, because this is a year-to-date total. Power BI is basically telling me that I need a date field over which to calculate this year-to-date total. So, of course, I'm going to go straight down here to my date table, and I'm going to go ahead and grab my date field, and I'm going to drop that in here. And I want to point out one thing, and that is the auto-generation of this error message here. Time intelligence quick measures can only be grouped or filtered by the Power BI provided date hierarchy or a primary date column. So let's go ahead and peel back that layer here in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and first drop my date hierarchy over here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this revenue year-to-date measure that Power BI automatically generated. And I'm going to throw it in here just so we can make sure that it's working. I'm going to go ahead and add my revenue as well. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this down just so we can kind of spot check that our year-to-date is working correctly. Basically, it's adding every new day of revenue to all of the days of revenue that came before it. The revenue year-to-date does seem to be working. Now, one thing that I want to talk about that could trip you up with this automated year-to-date revenue measure is sort of unpacking this error message here and the is filtered by date. Basically, this is saying if date is filtered, return this error where time intelligence quick measures can only be grouped or filtered by the Power BI provided date hierarchy or primary date column. So notice that it's basically telling us we have to use the Power BI provided date hierarchy. So let's see what happens if I decide I don't want to use the date hierarchy Power BI and instead I want to use a date column. You'll notice that now it's throwing an error and if I click on see details it's showing me that same error that's sort of hard-coded into the measure here. Well, you know, Power BI generates these quick measures but we don't have to stick with all of Power BI's logic here. So what we're going to do is we're going to just get rid of the stuff that we don't need. We're going to kind of take the guardrails off of this thing and we're just going to re-save it without that error message and without the restriction to use the date hierarchy. And we're just going to enable ourselves to use the date column in our date table. It's just kind of a shortcut that I utilize, even though, uh, you know, honestly, there's not much of a shortcut that's needed for calculating uh, total year to date because you already have a total YTD function that does all of the work for you. Just letting you know that if you uh, are sort of trying to understand these things, or if you're feeling more comfortable with quick measures in the short term, you can always develop a quick measure and then sort of, you know, tweak it or adjust it to sort of fit your purposes. That is something that I do on occasion. Another uh, really useful uh, situation for a quick measure, uh, as opposed to necessarily writing everything you're on your own, is when you need to calculate a rolling average. So let's go ahead and click on rolling average under calculations. And we're going to use revenue again as our uh, base measure. And now it's asking us again for a date column. So we're going to go ahead and use our date column. And it wants to know, you know, what kind of period or interval we want to use. And in this situation, I'm just going to use days. And I'm going to calculate a rolling 10-day average for revenue. Uh, so it's just going to go, you know, kind of average the, the last 10 days back in time. And I don't need any periods uh, after. You know, I'm, I'm good with just whatever the last date is, kind of looking 10 days backwards. So let's go ahead and evaluate that. And let's go ahead and drop our revenue rolling average measure into this table here. And once again, you can see that I'm getting, you know, an error here because of the same situation where these quick measures are constantly kind of wanting to look for, um, 
you know, for just a date hierarchy from Power BI. So again, we're going to just kind of bypass that entirely. I'm going to get rid of all of that text and that restriction that's just, you know, kind of there to make sure that we're using the right date column. I know that we are. Um, and so I'm just going to go up here and you can see that it's referencing the date hierarchy uh, in this variable that Power BI is creating. And I'm just going to remove that. And don't get too hung up on the fact that there is a variable here. A variable is just a kind of measure that we're writing prior to you know composing our formula down here. So we're just saving a measure up here called last date. And once you call variable, you can call this whatever you want to. If I just want to call that variable last date, no problem. And you can see that it's throwing an error because last date is already a reserved function for last date. So let's give it an underscore to get around that. And now you can see that the, this variable just contains last date from my date table. And of course, I need to go down here and sort of fix uh, the uh, the calls of that variable. So I've got you know last date and I'm using it twice down here. So it's just to kind of help me be a little bit more efficient. All I have to do is just specify last date once and then I can kind of use it down here in the context of this calculation as many times as I want to. So we're going to go ahead and save that. We've now kind of taken the uh, kind of the bowling, the kitty bumpers off of this uh, DAX calculation. And now we've got a rolling 10 day average. And if we want to even change the name of this in the context of our table to rolling 10 day average, we can do that. And let's talk about the output up here for our rolling 10 day average, because you can see that, you know, it's really currently just showing me revenue. So let's go ahead and jump back over here and kind of look at what is happening. And sure enough, it looks like I missed an instance of my date hierarchy. Again, Power BI kind of configured this around the built-in date hierarchy, which I'm not trying to use. So let's go ahead and get rid of that dot date and resave this. And you'll notice immediately the numbers kind of update over here. Now they look like they make a little bit more sense to me. So let's go ahead and get re move re revenue YTD so that we can compare revenue and the rolling 10 day average. Because at first, it still might look kind of funny to you. We've got revenue here. And for the first line for the first day, revenue is equal to the rolling 10 day average. And that's only because there are no earlier days from January 1st, 2022. Of course, this is the first date in our sales data set. Um, but when we go to January 2nd, now we're getting $20,413, which makes sense as the average of 19,750 and 21,076. Then there's a pretty sizable dip in revenue on January 3rd. It goes all the way from 21 to 19 to only under $12,000. And that causes our 10 day average to dip yet again. Then you can see we've got another low day and our average dips yet again. So now we're basically filling in this rolling 10 day period. So here we have one day. As we go on down, we've got three days, then five days. And then finally, uh, on about the 10th day of January, we're going to reach that full rolling 10 day interval. And from here, we're going to roll forward our 10 day interval one day so that for all of the rest of the dates that we're seeing here, we're always rolling forward whatever date we're looking at in the most recent 10 days. So that's how we've got our rolling average. I just thought that if you're looking at this, since I do have this table sorted in ascending order, you might think that this looks funny at first. Let's go ahead and resort it. And on the other side, you can see that my date table goes past where my sales date data ends. So that's why our revenue is suddenly nothing and our rolling 10 day average is also nothing for the very end of 2023. We have to scroll down to where our uh, data set ends to see uh, sort of these measures repopulated. And there's our revenue. And you can see sort of our 10 day rolling average sort of, um, you know, it keeps going for an additional 10 days, even though there is no revenue until it finally sort of decays 
and we're left with only $34,718, which, which you see on October 10th, but it actually corresponds with the last day in our data set. So just kind of wanted to kind of show you how that's working behind the scenes and point out that, I mean, like aside from, you know, those silly error messages that quick measures can put on some of these date calculations that you might have to kind of manually go in and get rid of, if you don't want to use Power BI's built-in date hierarchy, you know, I just wanted to kind of walk you through what you do with the quick measures. The last example that I'm going to go through here, I'm actually going to use the date hierarchy because, you know, why not? Let's just go ahead and since Power BI keeps fighting us on it, let's go ahead and turn our date hierarchy back on and save ourselves some headaches. And let's do a running total. So I'm going to do a new quick measure and I'm going to calculate a running total quick measure this time. And I'm going to use revenue. And I'm going to use my date field. I'll use the hierarchy here. And I'm going to calculate this in an ascending direction. And now I've got my revenue running total and date. And you can see it's working just fine exactly the way our revenue YTD is, in fact. And now we're good. So there's just a few examples of quick measures. Uh, I'll be honest, I've been, I've been doing Power BI long enough and I've been writing enough DAX that I don't use quick measures a whole lot. But sometimes when I'm like, you know, wrestling with a new DAX problem or if, I, or if I'm just, you know, uh, brain farting or something and I can't remember, you know, the basics or I need to kind of go back and have Power BI kind of remind me. A quick measure is a good way to sort of cheat and remind yourself, you know, what the rough syntax should be because you can just sort of drop items from your data set in and Power BI just kind of connects everything for you. Um, and if you're just learning Power BI, once again, I still highly recommend that you get acquainted with quick measures because you, it kind of gives you a, you know, um, an intermediate to advanced uh, DAX developer at your fingertips, you know, to sort of automatically generate the DAX for you so that you can kind of cheat and understand, you know, why things are working behind the scenes the way that they are. And then you, once you kind of understand what's really kind of happening outside of the front end, then you can, then that's really going to help you sort of understand the fundamentals of DAX in a way that is truly going to escalate or elevate your own DAX acumen moving forwards. So you can kind of take the lessons learned from the quick measures to make yourself a better DAX developer until you no longer need to sort of uh, rely on the crutch of quick measures. But at the very least in this conversation about DAX, I just wanted you to know that quick measures are a thing and they're out there. Hopefully you find them useful. And that is the end of our very, very long, hopefully uh, you think comprehensive, uh, discussion of DAX. I feel like there are so many more topics I could have talked about, so many functions that I debated uh, sort of bringing into this, but I knew that I was going to have plenty of content. So uh, good luck with your DAX journey. Again, practice makes perfect. Uh, enter, you know, all, all of the contests that are out there. Practice with your portfolio pieces. Uh, and then, of course, you know, once you get your first job uh, in business intelligence and actually have like a real world scenarios to practice on, that's where your DAX is really going to fall into place. I'm confident in that. So thanks so much. I will see you in the next lesson.